What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on this channel and this tournament and video that you're going to see is actually the day after I lost a pile of money to Garrett and playing on Hustler live stream. So this is part of my LA trip and right after I played on Hustler, the day after we're playing at the Bicycle Casino because they actually had some WSOP circuit events. So playing for a ring, this one is a one day event, $600 buy-in. At the very end, the winner is crowned around X number of dollars and a WSOP ring. So I guess running good is an understatement as to how this vlog goes as a spoiler, as you can see from the title. Let's just get into it because this was a lot of fun and the poker gods were shining down on me to run good after a brutal, brutal session the night before. So let's see it, hopefully you enjoy. Smash that like button for this tournament vlog and let's get into the hands. We start off with 25,000 chips and early on in this tournament in level five, blinds are 300, 500, 500, and I pick up ace king. I raise preflop, end up going four ways to a flop where it comes jack five, five. I see bet the flop and I run into quads. Uh, <laughs> basically that's all that happens. I lose the minimum because action goes check, check on the turn and river and he shows pocket fives, which is pretty nice. So I lose a little bit here, but still alive when my chips get dwindled down to about 16,000 into level six. I have about 30 big blinds and I pick up pocket eights. I decide to go all in over an early position open and call. Both of those players end up folding, so I chip up a little bit. And that brings us to level eight. This is when the hands actually start getting going. Blinds are 500, 1000, 1000. I have 27K in stack and I have ace 10 off suit and a low jack. There's a plus one open to 2000 and action folds to me. I look at the clock and I actually have eight minutes left to late reg. So decision to just gamble for this buy-in? I think so. It's time to go all in as I want to gamble, so I decide to jam about 30 big blinds, which seems pretty awful in theory, but whatever. As played, this happens. Action folds to the button, who decides on calling with a massive stack. That's not a good sign, and when everyone folds, I see I'm up against pocket queens from my tournament life of bullet number one. If I win, then I get a double up. If I lose, I'm back at the rebuy period, and the flop goes brick, brick, brick. Turn, ace, bink. River 10 for two pair, and I suck out for a massive double up, close to about 60,000 in stack, and no need to rebuy. It's better to be lucky than good. Okay, after break, we're in level nine, blinds have increased, and I pick up kings in the cutoff. Things are going pretty well here after the rebuy period is over. There's an under the gun open to 3,000, a hijack three bet to 8,000, and on to me. What a beautiful sight to see with all this action. The under the gun player also has a massive stack, so I'd love to somehow get a double up here. Cutoff has a pretty short stack, about 25k, so I decide to four bet to 19,000. Pretty small min click, basically, of a four bet. And when the button folds, onto the small blind player, and he thinks about his decision for a while. This guy actually covers everyone at the table, and he ends up going all in. No way. Action folds back to the under the player and he thinks for way too long and ends up folding. And when the under the player folds, the hijack snap calls. Me too, obviously. I have kings. I'm just never folding this. And we see that the hijack player actually also has pocket kings. Such a sick spot to not be able to win the full pot. Small blind has queens though, so we're a huge favorite to chop up his stack. Praying for no queen on the flop and we win a massive pot. Let's roll the madness. Oh, oh. <laughs> nice oh, What's going on? <laughs> what a sick turn and I chip up massively after a brutal flop amazing turn and I fade the board pair on the river oh this one this one was really silly it takes some time to figure out all the chips as we chop the main pot but then I win the entire side pot and ultimately though after everything I win a bunch of chips I have up to over a hundred thousand in my stack wow living a luck box life 
Winning Kings in this situation was pretty wild. Let's keep the run good going today. We are up to level 10 now. Blinds have increased and I pick up Jack-9 offsuit in the cutoff. I raise it up to 3400 and get the big blind to make the call and defend. So cutoff versus big blind here. Let's see a flop of Ace-Queen-8 to spades. He checks it over to me and here Ace-Queen high boards are easy for me to see bet and I size to 2500 here. And for 2,500, he actually check raises to 6,000. Okay, well, it's a small amount for me to call and I look at my suits. The jack of spades is relevant and I have a gut shot straight draw. So for this really good price, I'm not going to fold here. I peel one and make the call. We're going to a turn which is the five of spades. So now the spade draw gets there and I have a spade in hand, which is nice. He decides to slow down and check. Now, I think I could blast away, given this line. Could definitely fold out some bad one pair, some ace-x holdings that don't like the spades getting there. So I start off with a bet of 9,500. This player has about 2,300 behind and makes the call. So we've got a pretty big pot brewing here. Let's see a river, which is the five of clubs. Crap. Well, totally bricked out on our draws here. And also I don't think an ace can fold with a queen kicker basically chopping with any ace. Anyways, he checks and I don't think I can check back jack high. I bet the turn to tell a story and jam river regardless of what happens. So I go for it. I put this player all in. He doesn't look super happy about calling off his tournament life here and he ends up folding, which is nice. Winner, winner, chicken dinner here. The bluff all in gets through and we live to fight another day, chipping up massively. Blinds go up pretty quickly. Now up to level 11, I pick up ace three of spades in the cutoff. There's a hijack limp and I raise to 6,000. The button now next to act jams for about 16K. Action folds to me, it's an eight big blind all in, and it's basically five more big blinds to call, so I'm I'm in here, sure, I guess. Why not? I make the call, and I see he has ace-king, so massively behind here, but the flop doesn't matter, it's 3-3-8. Three, three, Bink again, I'll take the flop, and I'll stack him. We are one step closer, one player closer to making the money. Wow. Current update as to what's going on right now. We're on break um, after level 12 right now, and things are going well. I'm surprisingly in for one bullet. So here for a little mid-session update, just a 10 minute break. It's a quick turbo today. So this tournament's gonna be done in and out in one day. Hopefully I can make a deep run. This should be a good comeback or a good little rebuild or whatever the hell, I don't know. I'm just trying to say this would be nice to win after punting off a lot yesterday or the last video. So wish me luck, there's, um maybe a hundred people left to make the money and that's always the goal. Winning is definitely the goal, but um, yeah, once you make the money, the pay jumps and stuff don't really matter. So there's no real ICM. So you'll probably see me go ham once we are in the money. And uh, I'm a big stack too. So that's always helpful. I'm gonna put people in some spots and try to run it up. Wish me some luck, I need it. Okay, after break here, I have about 160,000 in chips and I pick up Ace King myself. We're in plus three and I raised it up to 5,500. There's a button who makes the call, then small blind. Small blind jams for 50,000 total. It's 20 big blinds and action folds to me. I have a pretty easy call. Ace King offsuit is a pretty darn strong hand. So I make the call pretty easily. The button folds and the small blind shows us 10, nine off suits. Maybe he's been watching a few too many of my videos overvaluing natural nines that are in Baccarat with poker. But anyways, so it's gonna go run out. Don't love to see his 10, nine as it still has good equity, but the run out is clean. Ace King wins. And just like that, I got gifted 50,000 in chips and my stack is ballooning up to about 220K now. After being gifted some chips, let's play some poker here. I have queen 10 offsuit in the big blind. There's an undergun player with a massive stack to my left. He opens it up to 6,000. The button makes the call and I call as well. So three ways to a flop of king, king, nine rainbow with one spade. Action checks to the undergun player and he bets out 8,000. The button makes the fold here and onto me. I have a gut shot straight draw and I have good removal cards from King X holdings. So deciding to either just call, I could 
fold sometimes, but not often. Or the last option is to check raise and fight for this pot. That's what I decided to do here. I check raise to 20,000. I think this check raise mainly only works against solid and well studied players. And this guy certainly seems to be one of them. Anyways, for 20,000, he makes the call. So we're going to see a turn, which is the queen of spades now. So overall, this is just an interestingly developed hand. Not really sure what to do as I'm out of position. I now turn, I guess, the best one pair available besides aces. And now with showdown, I have a 10 that blocks jack 10. That's the straight and nuts. I decided to bet again for 25,000. And now turning my hand from bluffing into value, he takes a long time and thinks it over. And actually ends up folding. So this is a pretty big pot to win, especially when I check raise. It's almost like a mandatory must win hand. And it's nice that this worked out turning a pair. I'm sure my pair of queens were good and he didn't have a king in the spot. Just lucky to win. With 109 players left, we are progressing to level 13. I have about 250k in chips and I pick up pocket sevens in the hijack. I raise it up to 7,000 here in this new level. The cutoff three bets to 23,000. An action folds to me. Okay, this player has about 70 to 80,000 from my perspective. So about 25 big blinds in this spot. And sure, 25 bigs, hijack versus cutoff three bets. This is going to be an insta all in. So I jam, he snap calls. Not great because he has pocket jacks. Seems like no one really three bets light in tournaments ever. And the runout is not good. I lose this one, lose a pretty significant pot here as I pay him about close to 100,000 and I'm now tripping down to 150k. After a sun run, I have humbled by losing with sevens, but in the next hand, a level 14 now, I'm in the small blind and there's a cutoff open shove for like 25k. So six big blinds to call the button folds and I peel pocket tens. So certainly I'm all in, I make the call, big blind folds. We're up against King Jack off suit. We're off to a flop, which looks pretty good. The turn gives him open ended now, so at least a Jack doesn't even help him. And the river is a 10. He actually binks the straight, but I end up rivering a full house. So I stack him, win a few big blinds my way, but still very important big blinds to win with how my stack is looking and another step closer to making the money. All right, little update time here because there's some time because it's break. 70 players are left in this tournament. 67 make the money, so three off of the money right now. And I'm probably gonna play a little tight for the next uh, however many minutes it'll take to burst the bubble. Once that happens, all hell breaks loose, like I said. The min cash is like around $900 for a $600 tournament. 1.5 Xing your money is not the goal. The goal is to build a chip stack. What's interesting is that to my right, there's this player named Ari Engel. He's uh, pretty damn good if you look at his tournament history. So gonna try to navigate a relatively tough table after this break, make the money is the goal after that try to build a big stack and win. So let's just run good. After the break, we're now at level 16. Blinds have increased and I have owed 170k in stack. And this hand, I'm in the cutoff where there's an early position open to 14,000. There's one player who makes the call and then another player makes the call. Then a third player makes the call for 14,000. And now I peel pocket kings. Jesus, we are on the stone bubble here. And this is a premium. This is definitely a spot where I want to fold a lot of the time. But pocket kings is definitely not a hand I'm going to be folding. I'm thinking that if I three bet, it would be a sizing to like 60 to 70,000. Definitely weird stack sizes, leaving myself like 100,000 behind. So I decide to go for the all in button. I rip it all in and action folds to one of the callers with a really big stack and he thinks about it for a long while. Ultimately, I'm not going to make you sweat it as long as I did, but he ends up actually folding. The guy who folded said he had ace queen suited. So it's nice to win a pile of chips that were dead in the middle. It also would have been nice to see a call and, and chip up massively too. But anyways, I'm at 250K in my stack now, one of the bigger stacks at the table and still on the stone bubble. The stone bubble is pretty relevant here in this hand as the very next deal, I pick up 10 eight of spades in the hijack. Action folds to me and I raise it up to 13,000. Now it folds to the big blind player who decides to three bets, three bets to 41,000. And this is someone who's three bet me before around this same configuration. 
This three bet leaves himself with about 100,000 behind. And initially, obviously, my thoughts are to probably fold this trash against a three bet, but all the options now enter my head as I think a little bit more. If I make the call here, then the SPR is going to be close to about one to one, so about one to one stack to pot ratio. And if I fold, I lose 13,000 and move on to the next hand, it's not a big deal. But the third option would be to go all in. And if I jam, this player is going to fold everything besides queens or better. And on top of that, I would pick up about 50,000 and add it to my stack. So going to take advantage of these ICM implications right on the stone bubble. If I jam, he's going to call off for his tournament life and no one wants to be the bubble boy, right? Let's be aggressive. I choose the aggressive route and announce all in and he snap folds. So this worked out. It's nice to get this one through, and now my stack is up to 300,000 after a very nice and well-timed all-in. On the stone bubble here, one of the bigger stacks, I've been relentlessly opening, and I pick up pocket tens in plus one. I raise it up to 13,000. The player to my left with a similar size stack makes the call. So we're going to a flop of King Jack 5 Rainbow. Here on this board, certainly can go either way with a check or bet, and I decide on the more aggressive route because we're still on the bubble. I bet 11,000 and he decides on a call. When he calls, I certainly don't feel great about it, but when the turn is the seven of spades, brings in a backdoor flush draw, I think now it's time for my hand to just slow down and relax, but in game, I decided to bet 25,000 because putting more chips in the middle is something that I do. Anyways, for 25K, this player calls again, so it's definitely not feeling great about it. And when the river is a six, now I feel like if I bet both streets, I have to fire the river and just turn my pair into a bluff. But in game, I checked, he checks back with ace jack off suits and I lose a relatively big pot. My stack is now down to 240,000. And I think this is definitely one of the hands that I misplayed the entire day. One of the worst played hands to be quite honest with you, but I had to show it. Finally, after a long, long while of being on the stone bubble and playing hand for hand, we're finally in the money. So we can all breathe and let's move on into level 17. I pick up King Jack off suit in the hijack with less than 200k in stack. I raise it up to 18,000 and get a short stack on the button to make the call. The blinds come along as well, small blind and big blinds. So we're going to a flop multi-way, would love to win this one. And when the flop comes, King 7-3 rainbow, wow. This is super dry and I love it. Action checks to me and I decide on a very small bet of 15,000. It's hard to get called by worse unless they specifically have a king and obviously when I have a king, it's hard for other people to have kings. Anyways, for 15,000, this entices the button to rip it all in. It's about 40 to 50,000 and when action folds to me, obviously I have an easy snap call here with king queen. He shows pocket five, so maybe my small bet on the flop induced him to go all in, and the run out is good. I fade the two outer and win. Chip stack is back up to 300,000, so with my punt with pocket tens a hand earlier, all things good now, I'm back at 300k. All right, in this next hand, I have a six of hearts in the hijack, and I decide to open up to 18,000. The player to my left decides to three bet jam, 65k. It's eight big blinds, so it's a very annoying and small amount, but when action folds the big blind who tanks it up for a long time, takes his time, and while he's thinking, I think that if this player makes the call, then I have an easy fold, but if the big blind folds, then I have an easy call. And he ends up folding, so, you know, like what I just said, I have to call, and I see him up against pocket kings. Ew. Anyways, still need to hit an ace and the flop comes ace high. Let's go. What a bank here. It's an easy game and I win. Just nice to crack kings and pick up more chips. Now my stack is back up to a little over 300,000. Blinds are starting to get a little bit serious now in level 18. Blinds are now 5,000, 10,000, 10,000. And I pick up ace 10 offsuit on the big blind. Action starts with the cutoff who limps the 10k. Then the small blind player who is a reg here at the bike raises to 42,000 with about 260k in stack. I cover him so we're playing about 25 big blinds deep and basically it's small blind versus big blind spot and with ace 10 I'm doing really well against all of the hands that the small blind could be raising here. So I decided to jam 
go all in here, the limper folds, and the small blind snap calls. That really doesn't sound good for me. And we're up against pocket kings. Oh my god, again. Can we crack kings again here by chance? That would be awesome. But this time, the flop doesn't look good. It's queen, queen, six. Gonna need some serious help to continue playing here. The stack would be crippled if I don't win. Please smash that like button because that run good always comes when you do it. Let's see a turn, which is a brick. Okay, all the people that hit that like button didn't help, but the river ace from space. Let's go. What a disgusting, disgusting suck out on the river here. The three outer. Now my chip stack is up to 600,000. Went from basically being out of the tournament and now being very much alive with a massive chip lead over the table. Just two hands later after cracking kings, I pick up sixes on the button. There's a cutoff who's just new to the table. Open rips it for 94,000 basically nine big blinds. On to me here, I'm not going anywhere. I announce a raise to 200,000. The blinds fold, and we're up against ace seven suited, so let's just win a flip. If I can win ace 10 versus kings, I can certainly win a 50-50, right? Let's stack three opponents in 15 minutes. The run out is clean. Of course I win. Let's get this going. My chip stack is now about 700,000 now, just stacking everyone left and right. My table is now playing a little shorthanded because I've been stacking everyone, and this hand with pocket sixes and plus one, there's an ungun open to 22,000 with about 300k in stack. I decide on making the call with sixes, it's a good hand to play. The big blind calls as well. We're going to a flop three raise in position, which why wouldn't it come? Jack seven six, two hearts, a bank with bottom set, and even better, the ungun player bets out 35k. Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of the raising because a set and three of a kind is going to be a pretty good hand. I decided to raise it up to 100,000 in position. The blind smartly gets out of the way, but this under the player jams for 300,000, give or take total. I snap call, I show my sixes, and he has pocket sevens. Oh my god. That's pretty gross. I tell him nice hand, and big shout out to Steven for flopping set over set against me, who's a vlog watcher. The turn brick, river six! Oh my god! Oh my god! Jesus Christ. No freaking way, one outer for quads. Losing my mind, so is the table. Not only have I been steamrolling everyone and stacking everyone left and right, but now, first time in my entire life, I've hit a one-outer for quads. Pretty brutal, pretty gross, and I still have to give a huge shout-out to Steven, who watched the channel and who I sucked out on in this video. Big shout-out to you for being a good sport. It must be pretty gross to end your tournament life from a one outer <sighs> but living that luck box life right now my chip stack is over 1 million and i am just cruising in this tournament right now what do you want me to say we're on break mm -hmm. um there are let me look there are 40 players left the past 20 minutes have been very eventful i think i stacked like four or five different players all back to back to back in ridiculous fashion i guess poker got to telling me to stick with poker and just grind it out after the worst session, the two worst sessions of my entire life by so much. Now it's time to bank this thing with 40 players left. I obviously have to be the chip leader, I hope, with over a million in stack. Average stack is about 270K. Wish me luck. This is, uh, this is gonna be a fun one. It's gonna be in for a long night. Let's hope. Coming back from break, we're at level 19. I have over a million in stack and I pick up ace queen off suit in the button and there's a cutoff jam for 95K. You already know what's going on. I put in a raise to 200 to isolate. Everyone folds, and I show my ace-queen, and we're up against ace-10. If we're gonna win one-outers, we're definitely going to win when we're super ahead, and of course I win. Not even a sweat when there's a queen-high flop, and I, I pick up an extra 100k in my stack again. It's, it's just insane, stacking literally everyone in sight. Hand after that, I pick up jack-9 of hearts on the small blinds. Action falls to the button, who thinks it over, and ends up jamming himself. It's 98,000. It's eight big blinds, and onto me in the small blind here, I'm actually thinking it's a pretty close spot. Obviously, I have a big stack, and I think it's a call. 
for eight big blinds more. I just really would like the big blind to fold and get out of the way. So I think it over thinking that in equilibrium and through the tournament charts, this should be a call. So I call because I think that's what I do. Big blind folds and we're up against eight six. So somehow Jack high is ahead. Let's fade some stuff. The red out comes and who's surprised at this point? I stack another player. Jack high wins. Will I ever lose a hand? There's now 27 players left. We're at the final three tables. Let's bank. <laughs> uh, I would say what a pretty sick roller coaster ride, but roller coasters go up and down, and, and this one's just a sun run to the sun. I don't know what to say. Um, anyways, I have to end off this video here, unfortunately. Gotta split this video up into two parts because this would have been like an hour long video if we, uh, if we, if we continued this magical sun run. But all I have to say is that <sighs> that was, that was a fun ride and I hope you enjoyed this one. The video will come out in two days on Thursday. So thank you for sticking around. You don't want to miss part two. Will the sun run end? I, I, I kind of spoil it because there's so many more hands. So, so, so we run even hotter. Okay, that, that's all I have to say. <laughs> and you don't want to miss part two. Thank you so much for watching and sticking till the end. <sighs> I'm excited for when part two comes out because it's super fun. And this was a really long day. This was a one day tournament. So I played for, for a long, long time. I end up making the final table and you're going to see how it all ends on Thursday. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next one. If you made it this far to the end, smash that like button. It's always much appreciated shared and if you made it to the very very end it's like this part where i'm talking nonsense for no reason that i could stop right now um these uh these hoodies got something in the works uh you'll you'll see something soon from me i'm a big fan of these it's clean they come in black and white maybe i'll show off the white one in the next one who knows see you guys next time peace